Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the headquarters, United States Army Corps of Engineers. This is a special day for our Army and our regiment as we gather for the annual Engineer Regimental Muster. Today, we also celebrate the 246th birthday of the United States Army, as well as the 246th birthday of the Engineer Regiment. At this time, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation provided by Chaplain Bradford Bowman. Please join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, today we gather together in celebration of our proud and storied lineage that we share in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on this, our 246th birthday. It is our prayer moving into another year that we continue to perform our varied tasks with excellence. Guide us in making rough places smooth, crooked ways straight, and our environment safe. May our minds be keen and our calculations accurate. Our myriad projects successful and our faith in you unending. Enable our topographers to be precise and our stewards to be steadfast. May our works reflect a degree of your perfection and br bring delight to everyone who benefits from them. Give audacity and courage to our combat elements forward deployed in harm's way today and keep them safe in all they do for our great nation. Finally, Lord, continue to grant your wisdom and strength as we continue to build the nation we all love. In your name we pray, almighty God, engineer of all eternity. Amen. Please be seated. And thank you, Chaplain. I think that was the Chaplain's uh, last act as the USA's Chaplain. So a big round of applause for Chaplain. Our hosts for today's ceremony are Lieutenant General Scott Spellman, the 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Command Sergeant Major Patrickson Toussaint, the 14th Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Joining us today is Mrs. Cherise Spellman, Major General Jeffrey Milhorn, Deputy Commanding General for Military and International Operations, along as with uh, members of the Senior Executive Service and, and those joining us virtually and in person. The birth of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers can be traced back to 16 June 1775, when Congress authorized the chief engineers as one of several staff officers for the Army it had created just two days earlier. After overseeing the construction of fortifications during the Battle of Bunker Hill on 17 June 1775, Colonel Richard Gridley was wounded. A few weeks later, when General George Washington assumed command of the Army at Boston, Colonel Gridley became his first engineer. Three companies of engineer troops were added to the Continental Army in May 1778, and all engineer officers and troops were formed into a distinct branch in March 1779. 
The Corps of Engineers disbanded at the end of the revolution, but in 1794, engineers returned to the Army in a United Corps of Artillerists and Engineers. On 16 March 1802, President Thomas Jefferson signed legislation permanently establishing a separate Corps of Engineers and constituting the Corps at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Engineers have been part of many important moments throughout the history of our Army and our nation. Notable achievements executed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers include designing and building early fortifications to resist the British assault, exploring and mapping the rest western frontier and our nation's navigation channels, the construction of the Panama Canal, and the Corps' involvement with the Manhattan Project. Soldiers and units of the Engineer Regiment have provided mobility, counter-mobility, and survivability support throughout every major conflict in our nation's history. Perhaps General Persephone Smith summed up engineers the best when he reported that for officers of the Corps, nothing seemed too bold to be undertaken or too difficult to be executed. At this time, I'd like to take a few moments to review the history of the mustard. The word muster itself means to cause to gather. The muster roll is register of the officers and soldiers in a military unit or ship's company. In the broadest terms, the muster is a gathering for service, review, inspection, or roll call. The military muster in the United States dates back to 1637, designed as a gathering of the local militia to a central location to be enrolled or answer the roll call and receive training. The muster was also a social occasion. We can never forget our previously fallen engineer soldiers. At this time, I ask that Command Sergeant Major Toussaint please come forward. Well, welcome and thanks for joining us in uh, today's engineer muster. Uh, today we gather in celebration of the Army's and engineer 246 birthdays. 246 years ago, our nation's leaders established the Continental Army. That army, our army, fought in the battles of Lexington and Concord. Our army faced strange warfare in Europe during World War I and the battles of Omaha Beach in World War II. With strength and courage, our army went through the Tet Offensive in Vietnam and the valleys of Afghanistan. During times of war and peace, our army has been entrusted to defend this great nation, preserve democracy, and defend freedom at the home and abroad. When our nation has called, armies, America's Army and the Army Engineer Regiment has answered the call to service, always. Today is our birthday. Soldiers, civilians, family members. The Army birthday is a day to celebrate 246 years of service to the nation. Let us reflect for a moment on our heritage as engineers. You heard today about the history of the Army, of the engineers, but the legacy of the military engineer far it predates our official birthday. Today, the oldest unit in the United States Army, Engineer Regiment, is the 101st Engineer Battalion of the Massachusetts National Guard established in 1636. And although the history of American military engineering goes back to more than 355 years, the heritage of military engineering reaches back to the earliest beginnings of organized armies. Our Young Engineer Corps was created with the support of professional French military engineers, men like De Fleury and Lefant. Today, that French heritage is still seen within our Engineer Corps. The language of the engineers, Abati, Gabillon, Farsin, and Ponton, has its roots in the French language, as does the term sapper. And of course, the Corps of Engineers model, Essayons, is the French for let us try. Let us try. That is the spirit of the Engineer Regiment and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The spirit, has, the spirit that has sustained us for 246 years. It was that engineer spirit that mapped the West, opened the navigation channels, built the Panama Canal, and the Washington Monument. The nation asked then, and we answered. The nation asks now, and we deliver. You are amazing professionals and resilient people. 
you have weathered the storm of COVID-19 and stepped up in response to national disasters that have ravaged our nation over the past year. We could not be proud of your dedication and passion for service. You have our commitment that people will always be our number one priority. Our goal is to ensure that you have the resources and support you need to successfully deliver injury solutions to our nation's toughest challenges. It is a privilege for us to serve the Army and the nation. That is what we celebrate today. Happy birthday. SA Owens, building strong, Army strong, winning matters. Thank you, Commissioner Major Toussaint. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Lieutenant General Spellman. Thanks, Sean. First, I, I want to thank everyone for taking the time and, and coming down the hall today and, and celebrating this uh, very important occasion with us. It, it's, it's important that you're, you're here. Um, if you're on camera or you're joining us in the virtual world, you, you can't see there is a, a large squad or a small platoon behind all of us, right, that is making all of this happen. So thank you, Karen and team for pulling this together. Sergeant Kim, where are you? You're, Sergeant Kim's over here. I know he did not make that cake in quarter seven because our ovens are not big enough. So I don't know where you had to go, Sergeant Kim, but thanks for the uh, all the effort in uh, in pulling, uh, pulling that together. Hey, look, uh, Amy Gaskell put a great speech together for me. And Amy, if you're listening, I'm going to apologize. I'm just going to go for the heart fear for a, uh, a couple of minutes with everyone's uh, permission. So Sergeant Major said, 246 years now, we've been an engineer regiment. I'm going to go back, just tell a quick story, three years ago, and I'm not the first chief to have to answer this question, but I wasn't the chief at the time. And uh, Secretary Esper was just coming on in as the Secretary of the Army, and General Semnite and I went up there to go see him. And you may remember at the time, there were some, a few members of Congress asking, asking the question, why? Is the, is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, this national asset, why is it, and I'll use Secretary Esper's words, buried down inside the Army? This is a national asset. It should be elevated up to uh, some uh, other type of secretary uh, status. And I remember just looking at Secretary Esper, and I, I gave like a, a three-word answer, four-word answer. I, 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 Mr. Secretary, it's because Congress and the nation trust you right, to deliver it. And I, by him, I meant all of you, right? Those of us in the Corps of Engineers that, that wear the uniform and our civilian technical expertise, that's where uh, the trust in it comes from, right? Because we deliver our analysis and our, our technical advice and our solutions to the nation based on the numbers, right? Based on, on facts and based on science, not based on uh, the politics of the day. And that, that was my response to him. And that's what's carried the, the water. And again, a number of chiefs have had to go down that route with, uh, with different administrations over time. But I just think about that for a moment. You are a national asset. Right? We, we, just, we have a record program at the moment of about 62, Tom Steffens will correct me, I'll get this wrong, 62 or $63 billion of projects on the books that we're not going to all get to this year, but over the next several years, we'll get that down. We're having conversations now with the current Congress, Butch Graham is it here, where they're looking at a massive, uh, still in debate in, in the administrative White House and in, in the halls of Congress, but a, a, a massive infrastructure bill where a fair part of that investment is going to come to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, both on the, the MILCON, international operations, side, and also on our civil work side. But just think about that uh, for a moment. That's an amazing amount of trust that the nation is, is putting in us to, uh, to deliver. And we will. We're going to deliver a quality project, a quality program's on time within budget, and we're going to do it safely. We've been doing that, as Sergeant Major said, for 246 years, and God willing, we'll do it for another 246 years. So my parting message to you is I just want to thank you for who you are. Thank you for choosing the Corps of Engineers to bring your talents and, and your passions to work each and every day. I would just tell you the nation uh, has counted on us before, ever since the 16th of June, 1775, up on uh, Breed's Hill. And they're going to count on us uh, tomorrow and in the uh, months and years ahead. So I just want to say thanks for all that you do. Thanks, Chief. Uh, appreciate those words. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us in the singing of the Engineer and Army songs. The words are in your program. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have the Chief and Sergeant Major come up and do a cake cutting, which I'm really excited for. I hope we can get a shot of the cake, which looks like the Panama Canal.
tongue is on its way. Hell of the king is on its throne. For oh, where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Safety. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the last requirement for today's ceremony is to sign the muster book and receive your muster card if you don't already have one. Please note the cards are a one time issue only. So if you receive one during a previous muster, you do not need another card. Thank you uh, for attending today's ceremony. This concludes the formal portion. Thank you for coming and please stay and join us for some delicious cake. Thank you. <laughs>